वेलकम बैक टू क्यूरियस वेट डियर फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर मोहसिना द टॉपिक फॉर टूडेज वीडियो इज ट्राइंगल्स इन होसेस सो दिस इज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक एज फार एज वेटनरी लाइसेंसिंग एग्जाम्स आर कंसर्ट सो लेट्स बिगिन स्ट्रैंगल्स इन होसेस Strangles, also known as distemper, is an infectious, contagious disease of equidae, and this disease is characterized by abscesses of lymphoid tissue of the upper respiratory tract. The causative organism is. Streptococcus equi equi. It is a highly host adapted strain and produces clinical disease only in horses, donkeys, and mules. It is a gram positive, capsulated beta hemolytic Lanesfield group C coccus. and it is an obligate parasite and a primary pathogen so this is the picture of streptococcus equi equi here it is gram positive capsulated beta hemolytic coccus coming to the etiology and pathogens streptococcus equi equi is highly contagious and produces high morbidity and low mortality in susceptible populations Transmission occurs via fomites and direct contact with infectious exudates. Carrier animals are important for maintenance of bacteria between epizootics and initiation of outbreaks on premises previously free of disease. Survival of the organism in the environment depends on temperature and humidity. Because this bacteria is susceptible to desiccation, extreme heat and exposure to sunlight. and must be protected within mucoid secretions to survive under ideal circumstances the organism can survive approximately 4 weeks outside the host under field condition most organisms do not survive 96 hours Now let's see the clinical findings of this disease. The incubation period of strangles is three to fourteen days. First sign of infection is fever, one or three to one or six degree Fahrenheit. Within twenty-four to forty-eight hours of the initial fever spike. the host will exhibit signs typical of strangles including mucor to mucopurulent nasal discharge depression and submandibular lymphadenopathy here you can see a picture of ruptured submandibular abscess under the chin of a host recovering from strangles granulation tissue can be seen around the borders of the ruptured sites horses with retropharyngeal lymph node involvement have difficulty in swallowing inspiratory respiratory noise due to the compression of dorsal pharyngeal wall and extended head and neck Older animals with residual immunity may develop an atypical or catarrhal form of the disease with mucoid nasal discharge, cough and mild fever.
then there is a condition called metastatic strangles or bastard strangles characterized by abscission of other lymph nodes of the body than submandibular then particularly the lymph nodes in the abdomen and less frequently the lymph nodes in thorax are also involved here you can see a picture of host with metastatic or bastard strangles uh, there is pharyngeal swelling discharging abscesses then weight loss abducted elbow associated with dyspnea and ventral edema streptococcus equi is the most common cause of brain abscess in horses uh, here you can see a picture of brain abscess in a horse cross sectional view caused by streptococcus equi equi infection now moving on to diagnosis diagnosis is confirmed by bacterial culture of exudate from abscesses or nasal swab samples cbc reveals neutrophilic leukocytosis and hyperfibrinogenemia serum biochemical analysis is typically unremarkable so fibrinogen will be increased and there will be neutrophilic leukocytosis in complicated cases may require endoscopic examination of upper respiratory tract including the guttural pouches ultrasonographic examination of retropharyngeal area or radiographic examination of the skull to identify the location and extent of the retropharyngeal abscesses here you can see the endoscopic image obtained from a hose with streptococcus equi retropharyngeal abscess here the abscess is compressing the do dorsal wall of the nasopharynx obscuring visualization of the arytenoid cartilages here you will see the different lesions caused by strangles that is guttural pouch empyema that is seen on the top left most picture then there is brain abscess Uh, then separative inflammation of larynx then left and right retropharyngeal lymph nodes so here you can see the location of guttural pouch also in the second picture then post mortem images of different strangles infected guttural pouches showing different stages in the development of chondrules first picture shows gross empyema and second one is soft semi formed chondroids and third is firm formed chondroids so that's all about diagnosis of strangles then coming to the treatment the environment for clinically ill horses should be warm dry and dust free warm compresses are applied to sites of lymphadenopathy to facilitate maturation of abscesses facilitated drainage of mature abscesses will speed recovery ruptured abscesses should be flushed with dilute povidone iodine solution that is treat 5 percentage for several days until discharge ceases the nonsteroidal anti inflammatory drugs can be administered judiciously to reduce pain and fever and to improve appetite in horses with fulminant clinical disease tracheostomy may be required in horses with retropharyngeal abscessation and pharyngeal compression antimicrobial therapy is controversial in strangles initiation of an antibiotic therapy after abscess formation may provide temporary clinical improvement in fever and depression but it ultimately prolongs the course of disease by delaying the maturation of abscesses antibiotic therapy is indicated in cases with dyspnea dysphagia prolonged high fever and severe lethargy or anorexia
Administration of penicillin during the early stage of infection that is less than or equal to 24 hours of onset of fever will usually arrest abscess formation. The disadvantage of early antimicrobial treatment is failure to mount a protective immune response and rendering hoses susceptible to infection after cessation of therapy. If uh, antimicrobial therapy is indicated, procaine penicillin, 22,000 international unit per kilogram, IMBID is the antibiotic of choice. An untreated guttural pouch infection can result in persistent guttural pouch empyema with or without conroid formation. Coming to the prevention. And if antimicrobial therapy is indicated, procaine penicillin is the antibiotic of choice and untreated guttural pouch infection can result in pet persistent guttural pouch empyema. Prevention. Post-exposure immunity is prolonged after natural disease in most hoses and protection is associated with local production of antibody against the antiphagocytic M protein. The clinical attack rate of strangles is reduced by 50% in hoses vaccinated with IM products that do not induce mucosal immunity. Local or mucosal production of antibody requires mucosal antigen stimulation. An intranasal vaccine containing live attenuated strain of Streptococcus equi equi was designed to elicit a mucosal immunological response. This attenuated strain is not temperature sensitive and it is inactivated by core body temperature like the intranasal influenza vaccine. Reported complications include Streptococcus equi equi abscesses at subsequent IM injection sites, live bacteria on hands of administrator causing submantibular lymphadenopathy, serous nasal discharge and purpura hemorrhagica. Purpura hemorrhagica is uh, shown in this picture here. It is what is purpura hemorrhagica? It is a non contagious type 3 immune mediated vasculitis of hoses that is characterized by subcutaneous edema of head, ventral abdomen, and limbs and by petechial hemorrhages of mucous membrane. And it most often occurs as a rare complication of Streptococcus equi infection but, but can also develop after infection with other bacterial and viral organism. Coming to the control, clinically affected hoses should be physically separated from the herd and cared by separate caretakers wearing protective clothing. Rectal temperature of all hoses exposed to strangles should be obtained twice daily and hoses developing fever should be isolated and potentially treated with penicillin. Contaminated equipment should be cleaned with a detergent and disinfected using chlorhexidine gluconate or glutaraldehyde. Flies can transmit infection mechanically. Therefore, efforts should be made to control the fly population during an outbreak. Farriers, trainers and veterinarians should wear protective clothing or change clothes before traveling to the next equine facility. Additions to the herd should be carefully scrutinized for evidence of disease or shedding by nasopharyngeal culture and quarantined for 14 to 21 days. Two negative nasal swab cultures should be obtained during the quarantine period. Most hoses continue to shed Streptococcus equi for approximately one month after recovery. Three negative Nasopharyngeal swabs at intervals of 4 to 7 days should be obtained before release from quarantine. The minimal isolation period should be 1 month. Prolonged bacterial shedding as long as 18 months has been identified in a small number of hoses and guttural pouch empyema is the source of infection in most prolonged carrier states. Bacterial culture of nasopharyngeal swab and or guttural pouch lavage is used to identify persistent carriers.
so that's all about strangles in horses so it is little bit long topic and all the uh, the clinical signs diagnosis control and treatment all the aspects of this disease is very important so if the video is informative please like it and share it with your friends and comment your suggestions if you are new to this channel and not subscribed yet please subscribe and click the notification bell so that you get notified every time i upload a video see you soon with another video thank you bye